Hi, it's Renata here. If it's your first time here, welcome to my channel, The Quanti Girl, where we are going to talk about some topics in applied mathematics, in pure mathematics, in quantitative finance, and in Python program, because I'm a PhD in mathematics and a financial quantitative analyst, and I'm here to share with you some of my experience. Today we are going to get options data from a totally free source. There is a web source, a free web source for financial data called Yahoo Finance, where you can find both fundamental and technical financial data. And also there is a very useful Python package for getting data from Yahoo Finance called Y Finance. So today we are going to focus on pulling data from Yahoo Finance using this Python package. In order to get a previous visualization of the data that we are going to get today, let's access, for example, the page in Yahoo Finance that contains options data for Apple. So basically, what we are going to do today is to get the data from this first table that contains information about call options and also the same information for put options. By the end of this video, we will have a built a function in Python that pulls options data for a specified stock through the Y Finance package and it returns these options data in the form of a data frame. We will build this function together and the function's only parameter will be the specified stock. So now that we have a plan to follow, just keep watching the video and learn how to get options data from Yahoo Finance using the Y Finance package. So the first step is to import the libraries that we are going to use. So we are going to use pandas, numpy, y finance, date and date time to deal with date issues. So let's move on and define our function to get options data from Yahoo Finance for a specified stock. So the only parameter of the function will be the stock for which we want to pull options data. It can be, for example, Apple, Google, Microsoft, Tesla, or whatever stock you want to pull options data from Yahoo Finance. Okay. Let's move on and uh, work on extracting expiration dates for the options uh, data. So let's use the ticker function from Y Finance package uh, and let's store the expiration dates into a variable called expirations. So now that we have all the expiration dates for the options, um, we are going to iterate over expiration date to get the option data for this expiration date. But uh, before we start the iteration, as we had talked earlier today in this tutorial, uh, in the final, in the end, we are going to return all the options data we will pull from Yahoo Finance into a data frame object. So because of this, we are, first of all, 
defining um, uh, an empty data frame into a variable called options. So now let's start our iteration. So for each expiration date, we are going to use the op option chain function to pull the options data and with this we get the calls options and the put options for our specified stock okay we are going to create a column for uh, storage the expiration date because it's not a direct information that comes from Yahoo Finance. You need to define a column for this information. So we are saving each expiration date into this column expiration date. So uh, in the end of each iteration, we are going to append the new information for our um, final data frame options. So it is exactly what we are doing here. We are appending the new information for the new iteration into the options data frame. Okay, let's move on. Uh, one, one point here is that there is an error in Yahoo Finance that results in a wrong expiration date and we need to fix it. To fix it, we need to add one day to the expiration date. So because of this, the first thing is to transform the expiration date column into a date type because uh, as we need to add one day to a date we need to deal of course with the uh, date object so here in the first term we are converting the expiration date column into a date type and in the second term we are adding one day to the current expiration date okay and now we are uh, going to calculate the time to maturity of the options in days uh, analyzed so we are taking the difference between the expiration date and the today date and count it in days and we are counting it in annualized time so as considering that an year, uh, an year has uh, 252 business days we are dividing the number of days by 252 to get annualized time period so now we need to identify what is call option in our data and what is put option in our data. So to do this, we are going the information contract symbol that comes from Yahoo Finance and we are going to take, to take a slice of the string uh, to identify the call options and we are using lambda function for applying uh, the property we want for all the contract symbol column okay let's move on uh, okay when uh, here we have the we have three columns for the bit price of the stock apple or google or Microsoft or whatever stock, the ask price for the stock and the strike price for the option 
é em de o what we are going to do next is to calculate the midpoint between the bid price and the ask price and to do this we need to have these prices into a float uh, object type so what we are doing here is to take in all the columns of prices and convert it to float type using the to numeric function from pandas and here okay we are not using here we are not using the strike column here to do any calculations in this tutorial but of course uh, after you get all these options later I imagine that you will want to do some analysis and to do some analysis we need to deal with the uh, numeric objects if you uh, keep it as a string it will be a useful column in the point of view of making analysis so here we are defining a column for calculating the mid price the price between in the middle of the bid price and the ask price for the underlying stock of the option okay let's move on and uh, let's remove some unnecessary columns by unnecessary i mean columns that are not necessary when you are analyzing options data or building an options strategy so let's drop the column contract size the column currency the column change the column percent change the column last trade date and finally the column last price all this information comes from indirect from the Yahoo Finance and they are information that is not very useful when we are analyzing as we talked uh, earlier this is uh, useful information for analyzing options data so finally let's return all the options data we get here into our options data frame that you created here okay now we have our function let's run it to define it laying and finally let's uh, apply our function to for example apple stock and uh, let's see what happens okay so now we have some interesting information okay the first column is just the contract name for the option now here we have the contract symbol for call option uh, into this date for the stock apple here we have the strike price for the option here in bid and ask columns we have the bid and ask prices for their underlying stock that in our case here is apple we have the volume we have the open interest we have the implied volatility which is a very interesting information it's very interesting that we can get it from yahoo finance uh, in a second part of this tutorial we are going to move on and make some analysis about for example this information of implied volatility from yahoo finance here we have a column a column a boolean column to say to tell us that if the option 
using the money or not. Here we have all the expiration dates. Remember that to define this column in here. It, it is not a direct information from Yahoo Finance Table. Now we have the time to maturity, the annualized time to maturity in days. Uh, now we have a column to tell us if the option contract is a call or is a put. And finally we have the middle price that is the price in the middle of the bid price and the ask price of the underlying stock. That's all for today. Hope you liked the video. I really hope that this tutorial will be useful for you. Don't forget to hit the like button because it helps me a lot. And also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can watch the next videos. So, see you next time in the next video. Bye!